Tony Kornheiser, I fell asleep early. Who won? You know, I didn't want to just call you. Yeah. I wanted to drive to your house and ring the doorbell yeah. and say, wake up and look at Bama being trashed. I knew you were asleep. I, I, watched, were. I watched enough of it How late did you to go? see what was happening. I Bye. watched into the second half. And you I got up this morning that. and you hit the DVR and you thought what? I was sort of stunned. I have to admit that. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, Trevor Lawrence looks like a pro. Aaron Rodgers has a new coach, and Tony Dungy joins us for five good minutes. But we begin today with Clemson not simply beating, but pounding Alabama for the national championship last night, 44 to 16. Clemson scored the game's final 30 points, handing Nick Saban the worst loss of his Alabama tenure. No Saban team at Alabama had ever trailed by more than 20 points. It was an extraordinary display by Clemson. Wilbon, how do you make sense of this? Tony, there is a way to make sense of it. Yesterday, we had uh, David Pollock tell us that the defense wasn't nearly as good at Alabama as it had been in the past. I believe Joey Galloway hinted at the same thing. Okay, so you go into a game and you've got to deal with the following people who are going to be playing on Sundays real soon. Trevor Lawrence, a quarterback, just one of the most gifted quarterbacks you've ever seen of any age. Justin Ross, who makes catches like he's Jerry Rice. He's a freshman. T. Higgins. Travis Etienne, who just seems to run around and past everyone, mm -hmm. and Amari Rogers. That's half a roster of guys who are going to be playing on Sunday. Tony, they were too good for Alabama's defense. So I sat here yesterday and I said the only thing that would really surprise me was if there was a route and the route was by Clemson. Because right. I thought if there was a route, it would be by Alabama. And even into the game, I thought Alabama was going to win. I understand there's a pick six early, but Tua comes back, he throws it left-handed 55 yards in the air, and he gets a touchdown. Okay, Clemson scores again. Alabama comes back and scores. Alabama at one point is leading 16-14, to 14, and in my mind, they're going to win. I confess, I am seduced by Alabama. What happened after that, I was not Why prepared for. seduced by the people who were wizards on the field as if they True were playing freshman. a video game. True freshman. The, 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 the kid, Ross, yeah. right now he's the best receiver on the Washington Redskins. He, he would be. Right now. So yeah. I, I just, I felt... I guess I felt that the stage was a little too big for them, and I was totally wrong. Tony, if Alabama had the defense that we've seen them have four, five, six, eight years ago, okay. But, Tony, we, we, you particularly live in an age of offensive football. I know, and they were getting 20, 20 and 30 and those yards kids, a shot. That yeah, ensemble of kids. And, by the way, there's a, all those kids are coming back that I named. And there's an offensive line, I believe, of, of seniors coming back. What? I will say that the, just one good. of the things that surprised me, I did not see this coming, it seemed like Alabama was taking too long to gain enough yards to get down the field. And that fake field goal. Well, the fake field goal, how about the fourth and, how about the fourth and goal what play where you're just going to send Tua around and to so, run it? How about having him pass it? So, again, pass how much more wrong could I have been? The answer is not much more wrong. And you didn't even you were stay right. up to see it. I wanted to you taunt right. you in live time. You can do it now. It's our duty here at PTI to not only break it all down for you, we then owe it to you, the viewer, to tell you exactly what this title game result means for the future. In other words, Tony, tell our audience whether Clemson crushing Alabama last night means there is any kind of significant change at the top of the college football pyramid. I'm going to say no, and you're probably going to disagree. I will go back to the analogy that is made all the time. LeBron James getting to the finals against the Golden State Warriors. When LeBron won, I didn't think there was a great change because I think we're going to see them again next year. These two teams. Look, this is an enormous win. Alabama's a great team. This is not like beating George Mason in the Final Four and you go, well, how did they get here? What a great run for them. That's right. The first best team beat the second best team. But I am not going to be surprised. My Tua comes back. I am not going to be surprised if next year Alabama could beat Clemson because I think they're that much better than everyone. Yeah, they are the top of the college football pyramid. They. Not he, not it, yeah. not one team. They. Clemson was already there. We've seen That's that right. over the past four years. So, no, so it doesn't mean that other people get to rush up the pyramid No, 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 no. So we've There's got no Clemson, vacuum. I, I'm, I'm watching, and I don't want to, you know, get into some wild exaggeration about what I think this could mean because how do you go for long successfully against, against Alabama? You don't. Against Nick Saban, you don't. But these are all copycat leagues. And in, in college football, you've got five sort of equals, and they're all copycats, and they all look at what Clemson did, and you, you can't get the personnel. But are there things that coaches are going to look at all summer and ways they think – that Alabama in the SEC could be knocked down even a notch. I wonder. I don't have an answer. I'm, I've got two things to say. One is that what's happened to Alabama lately, 
they lose all of their top coordinators because yes. they're given Assistance. big time jobs just yes. by working with Nick Saban. You see how many they've lost lately? So maybe there's a brain like, drain, but I don't is. think there's a talent drain. The other thing is that there's a question that, that is going to come up in the next few years, if not today, what? for Dabo Sweeney, who's 49 years old. He's an Alabama grad. Nick Saban's 67. At some point, Nick Saban will get the call, but at some point he'll say, I'm out of here. And the first call is going to Dabo Sweeney. Do you think you should take that job? Because I don't. I would never want to follow John Wooden, Bear Bryant, Mike Krzyzewski, Bill Belichick. I, no. I wouldn't want to follow him, but, but it's Alma Mater. one guy, it's Alma and he's Mater. already going to have a pocket full of titles. Yeah. So I why not? I wouldn't do it. I think it's too tough. I'm but he, he knows that. Tough to say no that to call home. is coming. Well, Bon, as you have said already repeatedly, you not only have the winning team, yeah, you have yeah, the winning yeah, quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Two freshmen, Trevor Lawrence, can't go anywhere for the next two years but Clemson. Taj Boyd, who himself played quarterback for Clemson, said this about Lawrence to The Athletic, and I quote, Michael Phelps was literally born to swim. The kid got webbed feet, <laughs> short trunk, tall torso. He's built for it. Whatever Michael Phelps is to swimming, Trevor Lawrence is to throwing a football, unquote. And that's a that's great a, quote. If this were basketball, he'd be in the NBA next year. Yep. Well, but how should Lawrence feel about having to spend two more years at Clemson? You know, there's a, a phrase that's probably 130 years old that applies to this young man more than anybody. Big man on campus, okay? So un unless we're talking about the last 10 years where the NBA has this stupid one and done thing, big man on campus has meant something to many generations of star athletes in a college situation in an environment like Clemson. Yeah. He ought to enjoy it. Somebody asked him last night, immediately after the game, how many championships you think you can win here? He said four. Sounded like he won't LeBron. be around for that long. But Tony, you know what stuff happens? Two or one last year. What happened this year? I didn't win this They're year. They're coming for Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. He looks like he's big enough and talented enough. And, God, the personality on that kid to withstand it. But next year's another year. So I think it's very rare that a teenage boy is ready for the pros. Very rare. Herschel Walker, we agree on. But you can count him in the last 20 years on two hands. If you can get to 10. If you can get to 10. On the other hand, Mike, there's a conspiracy out there. A conspiracy of the NFL and the NCAA to keep the status quo so that both places make a whole lot of money. Okay. If I rail against the one and done, because I think people should be able to pursue whatever vocation they want, I got to rail against it. I don't know if he's ready, but here's what would scare me. What? What if he gets hurt? This is football. I, agree. I thought he that could even lose last all night. Of it. That's why I said he could lose all of it. Let me just say this, Tony. This is what makes college football better than college basketball. The prospect of the, the familiarity. Risk, the risk? The, the risk is to them. Yes. The audience is what makes it greater. Because there's how many more people are watching college football than college basketball? It's exponentially greater. Well, it's, yes. And exponentially. It is. Of course it is. Okay. Course and, it is. And part but of I would is, be a hypocrite if, if I said that it's okay for this kid to stay in school for four years or something like that when I don't think that's true. I wouldn't be a hypocrite because I think the college kids ought to be there at least one more in basketball. So there. Yeah, okay. So I can crusade and not feel like a hypocrite. Thank you very much. Not four years, though. Cheesehead news, Tony. The Packers have hired Matt LaFleur to be their head coach. Not Guy LaFleur. Mm. Matt LaFleur. He was most recently offensive coordinator and play caller for Marcus Mariota in Tennessee, where the results weren't great. Mostly, LaFleur was hired because he's been touched by both Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay, who are both, of course, geniuses and residents in offensive football. Tony, are you all in or your usual skeptical self on this hire? He's 39 years old. He's only four years older than Aaron Rodgers, who he's now going to coach. And by the way, I don't know if this happened, but I certainly hope that Aaron Rodgers says okay to this and thought it was a good idea, because if that didn't happen, that's lunacy. Um, I have this thing about people who sit next to geniuses where I don't think it necessarily rubs off. <laughs> I, I, you know, there are baseball managers I can talk about like that. Um, so, so he sits next to Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay in Washington. And then he goes with Kyle Shanahan to Atlanta. Uh, he doesn't go with Kyle Shanahan, you know, to San Francisco. Goes to Sean McVay, another, another genius. But when he goes on his own, when he's not touching those people, yeah. and he goes to Tennessee, the results aren't as good. They regress a little bit. So my answer is, I don't know. Can he do it on his own? I don't know. Let me, let me just ask a question here, because I, I know McVay's had two great regular seasons and Shanahan is son of a guy who probably ought to be in the coaching at the Hall of Fame at some point. Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan. Sure. Either young Shanahan or young McVay, how much have they won? How many titles? How many rings? Oh, zero so far. Zero. Playoff games? Well, 
Playoff uh, games? Shanahan is a coordinator in Atlanta, uh, certainly. Yeah. Head coach. Yeah. Playoff games? Um, I don't think so yet. None. No. But they just started. I'm just saying, they I know, started. I understand it's a Second copy. Year. The NF of all the leagues, and all the leagues are copycats in some form or another. Just look at Golden State and the three-point shooting that has come yeah. since then. But the NFL seems like more than the others, in which they're searching. They're all searching for the next Bill Walsh. No one has found sure. the next Bill Walsh or Joe Gibbs. And those would be the most recent guys out there, I guess. So I know the search. But now you don't even have to win anything. In this guy's case, what they're hoping for is, of course, that he is the guys he sat next to for a while. Yeah. You don't know, but you're giving a young guy a chance. They gave a young guy you a chance to. in Chicago. He looks good right now. Uh, okay. How many playoffs has he got? Say. No, After he's got doink, no. doink. Okay, but he's play, okay, coached one I'm year, just, Mike. I asked if you were all in you, or a little skeptical. I'm a little skeptical. Me too. I'm a little skeptical, Me too. but that's my a nature. Little. For a while there last nature, week, yes, Cliff is. Kingsbury was reportedly being blocked by his employer, USC, from interviewing for NFL coaching jobs. Now he is unblocked. According to Peter Schrager of Fox and the NFL Network, he is going to be the next head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Kingsbury's head coaching experience to this point consists of six years at Texas Tech, where he was 35 and 40. Well, Bon, one of your many home teams and one of your many homes is in Arizona. Is Kingsbury worthy of this job? It's the same question. It is. It depends on whether he can get Josh Rosen directed in a way that he's going to be a great quarterback. And by the way, he's got some weapons. He's got David Johnson at running back if he can stay healthy. And he might want to convince Larry Fitzgerald Stop being on the golf course, people like Will Bond and Kornheiser, and stay another. Yes, I know you're in your mid 30s. You're going to the Hall of Fame on the first stop, ballot. You stop. can walk. He needs to convince him to stay. You're if out of your league. You're out of your league. What? If he, he can't convince all those no. guys to get together, then no, he's not worth no, it. Fitzgerald is a member huh? at Seminole and Augusta, so stop. That's what he should do. Those are great places. Um, Shouldn't play football? What's interesting about this, Kingsbury's a great looking guy. I'd like to look like him. Is that going to help him? I don't know if it's going to help him or not. He's a guy. He did not coach in the SEC West against Alabama and LSU and Auburn. He coached in the Big 12, which isn't as good, and he doesn't have a winning record. Now, he had Patrick Mahomes, who is a supernova right now. Yeah. But what you don't know is this. Was he simply and smart Baker enough Mayfield to get too. out of the way of, you know, Patrick yeah, Mahomes? I mean, so, so that you're hiring the first guy. The Packers are hiring a guy because of who he sat next to. Who <laughs> They're hiring this guy because of who he, he stood next to on the sidelines and said, keep throwing I'm it. I'm fascinated by him because of what the offenses he coached in college looked like. And we're told all the time by guys like Steve Young primarily that college football is, res the the pro football is resembling college That's football. That's right. Particularly with less time to coach them at the pro level. You don't have as many preseason games. And now you get this influx of, of college guys and influence. Again, Tony... This is the pros. The play is still a player's league on some level. Mike, Do you think Josh Rosen has what it takes for Kingsbury to get this out of him and be successful? I think that's certainly possible. Mike, you, you, you can't say no to the NFL. They're throwing around seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars. I know. Pete Carroll just signed an extension for eleven million dollars. John Harbour is going to get that. You listen and you take one of these jobs. Let's take a break. Coming up are the Colts on the same level as the Chiefs. We're going to ask Tony Dungy. We'll also ask him whether the Saints should be concerned about an Eagles team that New Orleans blew out just a couple of weeks ago. I think both these hires could be great, but they could go together. I don't know. We don't. Thank you. Don't know. This Having is a show. The pros. This is a show where we can occasionally say, don't know. I don't know. That's right. Interesting. I'm football on the horizon this weekend, starting with the Colts and Chiefs on NBC on Saturday afternoon. We are pleased to welcome back Football Night in America analyst and our friend Tony Dungy. Let's start with this game. You're going to be in Kansas City for the Colts and the Chiefs. We spent a lot of time on this show on the Chiefs, everybody has, while the Colts have snuck up on everyone. I think they've won 10 of 11. Do you see the Colts as being honestly on the Chiefs level? I, I absolutely do. When you look at what they've done and uh, offensively, this offensive line uh, is something that I don't think a lot of people really understand how good they are. The Chiefs have given up five yards of carry on the ground, so the cold strength is going to play right into that. Andrew Luck is playing tremendous football. Patrick Mahomes is on fire. We know that. But Andrew Luck's thrown 39 touchdown passes, and we hardly even talk about that. So I absolutely think they can go in there and play really well, and I, I think it's going to be a tremendous game. Let's look at another divisional game, Tony. The Eagles visiting the Saints, and the Saints blew the Eagles out a few weeks ago. Are you expecting anything like that again in the rematch? 
I tell you, Mike, the advantage always goes to the team who was beaten in that situation because as the, the victorious coach, you're afraid to change anything. Hey, we blew these guys out. <laughs> well, I'd look silly changing what we did. Well, you have to make changes if you're Philadelphia, and New Orleans doesn't know what that is going to be. Uh, I referred back to a game in 2005. We were undefeated. We had blown Pittsburgh out in the regular season. And they came back to Indianapolis and beat us in the divisional round just like this and went on to win the Super Bowl. So uh, it absolutely can happen. Not saying it will, but it can. Tony, you notably told Mr. Kornheiser and me before the season started to look out for the San Diego. Well, I still call them the San, San Diego, Diego Chargers, Chargers, baby. And you got it right. Okay, so postseason, new season, as coaches always say, do you like them against the Patriots this weekend? I, I really do because I think they have the elements that you need. They've got a lot of speed on offense. They can make big plays. I think they'll challenge the New England secondary. If Melvin Gordon is healthy, they can run the football. They've got a veteran quarterback who's not going to fold up because he's going into Gillette Stadium. And on defense, they can rush the passer. And that's what you have to do against Tom Brady. I thought what they did last week was brilliant, putting Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram inside over the guards, and they wreaked a lot of havoc. I don't know where they'll put them, but those two guys, if they can pressure Tom Brady without blitzing, they've got a great shot. We'll get you out of here on this. This is very sensitive to Will Bond. Again, you put on your coach's hat. If Cody Parkey yeah. were your player, Stop. your player, Stop. How would you feel about him right now? How would you treat this situation? You know, I, I feel badly for Cody. If I was coaching him, I would say, you know what? You're, you're our kicker. We believe in you. You're a good kicker, and you're going to be fine next year. Now, he's going to have tough duty all off season, walking around in Chicago. Can he handle that part of it? Uh, that's what you have to see, and that's what they have to know about him. He's a good kicker. I think he's going to be back. And if I were coaching him, I'd stick with him and say, you know what, we're going to get you back in that same situation next year, and you're going to win a championship for us. Really? Because Will Bond would kick him out no. as soon as he could. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'd like to see him come back and make the kick to advance the Bears in the playoffs. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm warming up to that. You hated his guts that was yesterday. yesterday. It's a new day. Hey, Mike, let me give you Fred Brown. Yeah. Right? You, oh, you my know that goodness. Name. I was there. I covered the game, yeah. and I thought on the way driving in here, we ought to have a discussion. So you would because hug him. John Thompson put his arms around you'd Freddie hug him. Brown, you'd and hug he him. came back, and he won the yeah. national the next, championship. Yep. Familiar. Yes. I was covering that team, yeah. Tony. But you yeah. know what? what? You're not John Thompson. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. John Thompson had a long-term contract, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. A special 90-minute football night in America starts Saturday at 3 in Kansas City, followed by the Colts and Chiefs at 4.30. Let's take one last break, but still to come. Are the Bears about to lose yeah. their defensive coordinator? That scares me most of all. And should John Gruden keep personnel power over his new GM? I was thinking about Fred Brown driving in here because I covered all of that. The, 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 the past of you Worthy. You wouldn't have hugged him just like you wouldn't hug this kid Parky. Well, I might have been rough on Parky. Yeah. You ready to have your mind blown? So ready. Good time, people. Happy 19th birthday, Trey Jones. The younger brother of former Duke one-and-done point guard Tyus Jones. Trey Jones is rated the number one point guard entering college this year. But even as the number one player at his position, he's the fourth best freshman on his team. Trey Jones now has four games this season with at least seven assists and no turnovers, tying him for first all time at Duke with Hurley, Amaker, and Wojciechowski. That's a list. Tyus Jones is probably fourth best guy on his team. By the way, where's he playing in the league? You Quick. tell me. You're studying the list. Timberwolves. Come on, Fantastic. now. Fantastic. Happy anniversary, Marshawn Lynch. On this day eight years ago, you went beast mode with this 67-yard touchdown against the Saints in the playoffs. Unbelievable. Admit it. This is a beastly run. It's the kind of run you associate with Bronco it University. Just, I mean, look at that. Seattle fans were so thrilled and energized by this run that their collective cheering and stomping and activity literally registered a 1.0 on the Richter earthquake scale. Is that your biggest home field advantage in the league? Outdoors. The biggest outdoor one okay. is Seattle. I or the Lambo? I think so. Happy trails, Greg Schiano. Schiano leaving his job as defensive coordinator at Ohio State to, quote, pursue opportunities in the NFL. One of the people Ohio State immediately filled the position with is Greg Madison, just yesterday the defensive line coach at Michigan. And then today the Buckeyes hired Michigan linebacker wow. coach Al Washington. Wow. That's right. Ohio wow. State hired two guys from Michigan. They shouldn't have done that. Of course they These should. These guys shouldn't have gone. Why not? What is, does this say anything about Coach Harbaugh? Anything? Says he's happy, I think.
I think he thinks he can beat Ryan Day. One omission. Diana Rossini reports the Tampa Bay Bucks are close to hiring Bruce Arians as head coach. Well, let's go quick to the big finish. Let's do it. Nine News in Denver says the Broncos are choosing between Vic Fangio and Mike Munchak as the next head coach. Who you got? I wouldn't touch Fangio. Munchak. I'd I'd take Munchak. The White Sox signed Manny Machado's workout buddy John Jay to go along with his brother-in-law Yonder Alonso. Is that going to help them get Machado? Sign his agent. Give him money. <laughs> the Giants have reportedly had substance of trade discussions involving Madison Bumgarner with the Brewers. Good fit. The Brewers are aggressive. They are. Mike Mayock says John Gruden will have the final say on personnel calls. Does that make sense? It's his team. Ten years, $100 million. Mayock is a scout now at yeah. that point. Last one. Knicks and Warriors tonight. What do you expect? I expect the Warriors who've been coughing and wheezing a little get bit. Well. To get well, baby. Huh? Hot shot. <laughs> Try and do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. Better than Robitussin, a visit from the Knickerbocker. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcast. The greats, Vardaman Reeves Dunn. Shout out. Are you giving him free golf again? Don't do it.